Hey, if this is the first time you're using Bricks Builder, sections, containers, blocks, and divs might confuse you, especially if you're coming from another page builder. But in all honesty, they all kind of work in a similar way. I'm going to try and explain what they're for and how you can use them and also talk about the settings like the alignment, cross axes, rows and columns and stuff like that. But first, let's go over what is a section, a container and a block. Quite simply, on a brand new page, you can ignore the header. We have section, container, block and div. In its simplicity, you can think of the section, which is this one over here, as a house like an area, okay? So you could say your header is house one, section one, your hero banner is another section, that's house two, and a section about the services you offer could be house number three, which will be another section. The containers are in a way the rooms within the house or areas, however you want to describe it, okay? So you have a house, which is your section, and then you've got your containers, which are the rooms inside. And you can have as many rooms as you want within reason. The blocks now might be partitions within the rooms. So you might have like the lounge, but within the lounge, you've got a TV area and maybe a studying area. I don't know, right? So you might have individual blocks. And then within them is where you're going to have your widgets, your elements, your furniture, your TV and stuff like that. Now, the div over here, you can be very bespoke with what you do there. You can get a bit of code pen code or you can create your own funky code with HTML styling or anything like that. That's what the div is for. But if you're going to just use a lot of the elements that bricks give you, you might find you're not using this one that often, but you definitely will be using the section and containing the block. Now, I just want to make something clear here. If I go and click this plus sign here, I am going to get a section, one house and one room, one container. Let me now undo that. If I go over here, though, and I say I'm going to go for this one, and you might think, well, that's going to be one section and obviously two containers, right? Actually, no, it's a container, and then you get what's known as columns. Now, this is where it might get confusing. The columns are actually the blocks, okay? So if you're used to working in section and columns, now you're suddenly going section, which might have a container, which might then contain blocks. So just bear in mind though, okay, now what you do within them isn't that different. Now, I'm very quickly going to just start off with a section, we're going to colour it, then we'll add in container and blocks, and then we're going to mess around with the arrangement, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is just create a very simple section, like that. We have a section and a column. I'm going to pick the section, which is the house. I'm going to go over to the start. Now, I'm not touching any of these settings yet until we've got further content. Because if I do it now with nothing in there, you're just going to go, well, what was that all about? So let's first get some content in. Let's go to style. I'm not going to add in any marginal padding. By the way, a section is automatically a full width. You might not realize this. So if you were going to have a full width image with nothing in there, just a background image, you don't need a container or a block. If you were going to have a section and there was going to be a background image or just a color and you're going to have just a heading in the middle as well, again, you don't need a container or a block because it might just be the name of the house. Think of it like that. So on the layout, I am going to say make this be a 100 VH. 100 VH basically means the full height of the screen. 50 VH, vertical height, would be 50%. Right, let's just close down the layout and let's just give this a background color. I'm going to pick it from my color palette that I've already created. And we're just going to go for this really dark black color there at the moment. Now, the container that we have at the moment, I am again going to give this a background color. So make sure you clicked on container and we'll go with, in fact, we'll just pick a yellowy color, something like that. And now I'm going to kind of decide on, am I going to now give some padding to my, you know, oh, well, am I going to adjust the margin for the container? So I'm going to move it away from the borders of the section or am I going to add some padding to the section instead? What I'm going to do though is go to the section, go to layout. I'm going to click on padding and I'm actually just going to say, give me about 50 there. So instantly what it's done is it's pushed the container inward. I could have left that as zero and gone to the container margin instead and done it there as well. But this has now just moved everything inwards. Now into my container, okay, I am now going to just do a duplicate. And what I instantly get is two containers, right? Section, and I've got two rooms. To make it clear what we're doing here, I am just going to give this a different background color. 
And what I'm then going to do is now add in some blocks into the container. Now, just because I'm doing it this way, you would not replicate it unless you had to. Because normally in the container, I'd add in my heading, my text, my buttons, whatever else. And I would adjust it with custom width and some content maneuvering, which I'm going to cover off. But if you wanted to be very specific on how things sat, your blocks could help you out, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click on container one. We're gonna hit the plus sign for the elements and I am now gonna click block. Now, if you've clicked on the parent and then you click an item, it sits in the parent. If I had not done that and I had dragged over parent, make sure you're hovering over the parent it's gonna go into. Because if you don't, it might do this and sit outside. I want the block to sit in the container. Look how I'm moving it. It's hovering over it and now it sits within. Now you can't see anything yet. Don't worry about that just yet. Let's click on the container now and I'm going to go to layout and I'm going to say give me all the way around about 20. No, we'll go in more than that. We'll go about 30. Give me 30 pixels padding. You still can't really see the block. It is there when I hover over it. Let's give the block a background color. Why not, who? Hey? And we'll give that one a bit of a grayish, dark, charcoaly color there. Now, what I am going to do, though, is duplicate this, okay? And I'm going to move this over to be over the container. There's two ways to duplicate. You can either right-click and duplicate, or you can hover over it and hit the icon over there. Now, at the moment, the block is completely filling up container two. You must know why, right? because we haven't applied any padding. Now, if I was to right click here and go copy style and go to this container and do paste style, it will do the border. But here's what will happen also. It also gives it the yellow color. So just bear that in mind though, okay, that when you are pasting style, it, won't, it will take everything over. It's much easier for me just to go into layout, go here and just go, right, let's just do 30 like that. So we have section, two containers, and we have a block in each of them. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, I am going to duplicate container one in, sorry, block one inside of container one. Now, if at any point here you start to get confused with, well, what is what, just go in and rename this. So I could put this and put container one if I want. I could call this container two. I might say that this is going to contain a logo block or something like that. So you can be quite funky with your naming, however you want to do that. Now, let's just add in some items. I'm going to go over to my elements and I'm going to pick up the heading. Now, I'm going to, in block one of container one, I'm going to add in a heading. And because I'd already clicked on block one, it has gone in. Now, that heading, if I click on it, and we're not here to go through all the elements. It's more about the section containers and all of that. I'm not going to touch. In fact, I will touch the wording. I'm just going to change it to be hello. OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to now make that be a white font by go to style really, really quickly. Go to typography and I'm going to make that be a white font. And because the heading is now right up against the borders of the block, I might as well give the block a bit of padding as well. You will get into the habit of doing this. Now, one thing I will recommend is that I like, I've given it 20 pixel all the way around. I like to get my content in, get everything in. Then I mess around with the margin and padding. I'm doing it now on the fly, just so you can understand what's going on. But I like to get everything in, get your text in, get your logo in, get your buttons in, whatever that sit in that block or that container. Then mess around with the margin and padding because then you will have a better visual feel of how things look and how much spacing you need to have. Now this block, because the color is the same all the way around, I'm just gonna copy the style and I'm just gonna paste that style over there and I'm gonna paste the style there. So if I now take this heading and I duplicate it like uh, a few times there, I can pick this one up and dump it into block two and I can pick up this third one and dump it into block three over there, okay? So we've got that all okay. Now in block two, again, for simplicity, let's just change the color. Now I know at this point you're probably thinking, God, this guy talks a lot. I know I do, I talk, I talk, I get it, right? Now look at the arrangement of this at the moment. I can, if I want, go to any one of these. I can go to this block over here. I can go to layout and I could go to the height and I might say make it 300 pixels tall or 30 VH for 30% of your screen size, okay? You can adjust things here. I can even adjust the width as well 
of the block. So if I go to the block and I do uh, 200, block one is now 200 pixels. It's still in container one. Can you see what I mean by now? You might want to arrange things in a certain way. And by having this color that stands out a whole lot better. Let's just put that back over there. What about if we go to container two? Containers are always centralized on your screen. If I now go to the width here, what if I put in 400? Can you see what's going on? You can start to manipulate the size of things. So if you want to have a really funky layout, maybe you're going to have an image in here which is only a certain width. And then this is going to be slightly wider or slightly taller because it might be a portrait image as opposed to landscape. This can work for you really, really well. But we're not done yet. Let's rearrange it because everything at the moment is column, column, column. It's a column, basically, all right? In fact, what I am also going to do, though, is over here for this heading, I'm going to just duplicate this heading. So we have the heading twice. Pretend it's a text editor or a button, okay? Let's just go to the section. Let's now go to content because what we do here is going to kind of be replicated in a way in terms of logic throughout everything we do here. So we have the direction automatically set as column is default to that. If I click it, nothing is going to happen. I want those containers to be side by side, not underneath one another. So watch this. I do that and they have now gone side by side. Now they have gone to the bottom of the screen. Or oh, sorry, not the bottom, it's the middle of the screen. And that's because we now have to mess around with other components here. But let's just go back to column. That is how it looks. So we know about the row, just in case you were wondering, let's just stay on the column and let's now go through all of these functions and then we'll go back to the row. So what we're gonna do is align this to be in the middle of the page. So if I go over here to align main axes, this isn't currently at the start, it's automatically there. If I hit center, it goes to the center. If I end, it goes down. If I do space between, it's now spaced out, space uh, evenly, and then we have, sorry, that was space around, and then we have space evenly. For now, I'm just gonna leave this at the top. I'm just gonna adjust the containers for a moment and make them be 400 uh, uh, in width, just because when I do rearrange them, they're gonna fit a little bit better as well on screen. So if we go back to the section, and we go back to the content, you will find, though, that a lot of these items here aren't really going to do much for you at this moment, okay? Other than the one with the main axis alignment, this alignment cross axis, it's not going to do anything for you, okay? And that's mainly because of the column approach. But if you switch to row, things will go a little bit different. Let's go to the section and make this be a row. We do that and we have a row. OK, um, we have a bit of spacing in there because this is not full width in a way. Um, I've made them 400 by 400. So there's a bit of a gap in between. Now I'm going to go to container one and we have the same approach going on over here whereby you have your column. Now, if I switch this to be row, they are side by side. Here's what's really cool now about the container. So before when I went to the section, and I was messing around with the height of it, it moves them all in unison, right? And I've put them all at the top. But if I go to container one now, and I go to the alignment for the container, I can actually move this to be to the middle or down. I could even stretch it, to be honest. You know, if you stretch it like that, it stretches all the way across. So have a think about that. But you can now almost break up the fact that they were moving in unison before when you touched the section, whereas now with the container, I can have them positioned wherever I want, to a point, of course. When I go to the cross axes, at the moment, these two are side by side. I can rearrange those as well. So again, there's a little bit of like maneuverability going on there. Let's just put that in the center for now, just so you can see what it's doing there. And if I go to the block, I put the block into a row as well. Now, I mean, at the minute, the word hello is all the way over on the left, so it's automatically here. I can move it to the middle, I can move it to the end as well. So I'm starting to rearrange items and where they sit. Now what I'm gonna do is just get rid of the second container. So we just have one container at the moment. I'm gonna make sure I've clicked on the container and I'm gonna go back over to the content tab. As you can see here, it's in the middle. I could put it back at the top, anything like that. 
Now down here, we do have the functionality for column gap. If I go in and put in 50, it adds in a 50 pixel gap. Now, if we had had, uh, if I had had column two sat directly below me over here, so let me just duplicate that and let me put it back into row. Sorry, wrong one, section. Put the section back into like that. Okay, at the moment, they are bang on against one another. And I go to the row and I do 50, I could actually split them out over there as well. So just bear that in mind. You do have some, uh, you do have some control over what you do here. That was a simple way of looking at section containers and blocks. Now, a lot of the settings though, with the alignments and all of that, didn't really do much other than moving it top, middle, bottom, etc. What happens when you actually have lots of elements or widgets within uh, a container or a block? And we're gonna be looking at that in the next video. I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you. Never break, always fight, never quit. Do it right, play the game, win it life. No shame, there's no time for the pain, let the grind, I could change in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life. I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag, cause I sing.